Oil is perhaps one of the most important commodities in the world. The price can be volatile, which certainly adds to the complexity. Oddly, there are many producers of oil, but if there are disruptions in certain regions or with certain countries, diversification seems to take a back seat. The market will react dramatically. Over the last decade or so, we have seen oil move from nearly $150 a barrel down to $30 a barrel, a roller coaster unlike any other. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. We haven't done a deep dive on oil in a while. I really like to get into this type of topic because it's so important, so integral for investors, but as well as everybody because they need to understand the supply chain. They need to understand how the price of food, the price of everything is affected by oil. I'm going to show you some details today, really get into what's happening. Enough ranting GPS, let's begin. You can see WTI crude at $41 a barrel. That is down 10%. The price of oil has been battered down. I'm going to show you exactly why in just a second. I want to get into the numbers first. Brent crude at $45. That's down nearly 10% as well. Got a couple charts here to break it down further. When you're looking at Brent crude, the drop that we are seeing right now hadn't been experienced since the major commodity bust from 2008 you could see that on the bottom chart and this is just showing you the fall of WTI crude just over the past couple weeks it has really come down and of course we've seen the concerns in the stock market we've seen the economy slowing down and that has a dramatic impact on what's happening with oil before we get into the nitty gritty here, I wanted to give you this information because it's going to give you the backstory. It's going to give you that foundational information that is key. It is required to understand what we're going to talk about. For the last two plus years, the U.S. shale industry has been able to continue its oil boom thanks to the existence of a figurative three-legged stool of support. Those three legs have been easily identifiable. Number one, the ability to legally export crude oil to other countries. Number two, an ongoing license to build pipelines and conduct fracking operations. And number three, the continuation of the OPEC plus deal limiting exports by other oil producing nations. Okay, let me read the bottom part as well. So long as the three legs of that stool remain in place, crude prices have remained healthy enough to allow shale operators to continue drilling wells, increase overall U.S. production, and for the most part, remain fairly profitable. But as with any Stool, remove one of them and you got a big problem. That's what we're talking about today. There's always the concern about the pipelines. We see this coming in and out of the news all the time. But one of those has now been escalated. Let's talk about it. At 10.16 a.m. on a wet and dreary Friday morning, Russia's energy minister walked into OPEC's headquarters in central Vienna knowing his boss was ready to turn the global oil market upside down. He told his Saudi Arabian counterpart that Russia was unwilling to cut oil production further. The Kremlin had decided that propping up the prices would be a gift to the U.S. shale industry. The frackers had added millions of barrels of oil to the global market Market, while Russian companies kept wells idle. Now it was time to squeeze the Americans. You know exactly what happened here. Oil prices fell more than 10%. This is huge because one little change brought it down by 10%, a commodity that is incredibly important on a global level. For over three years, Putin had kept Russia inside the OPEC plus coalition, allying with Saudi Arabia and other members of OPEC to curb oil production and support prices. But the OPEC plus deal also aided America's shale industry and Russia was increasingly angry with the US willingness to employ energy as a political and economic tool. It was especially irked by the US's use of sanctions to prevent the completion of a pipeline pipeline linking Serbia's gas fields with Germany, known as Nord Stream 2. You might have seen that in the news. So OPEC plus is disrupted. You have the oil price falling by 10% and there is chaos in the commodities markets today, particularly because of this event. But understand it's been going on over the last few weeks. 
The OPEC Plus deal had never been popular with many in the Russian oil industry who resented having to hold back investments in new and potentially profitable projects. Russia was also dealing with the fact that this didn't work out very well and wasn't very profitable for the alliance of Saudi Arabia and Russia. When Chinese economic activity was obviously affected by the situation we are seeing now, cutting oil demand in Saudi Arabia's biggest customer by 20%, they wanted to call an early OPEC plus meeting in response to this change. Russia said no, and here we are today. The Russians didn't rule out deepening cuts, but kept making the point that shale producers should be made to share the pain. We can see what's happening right now. This is not good for the geopolitical political tensions that keep getting worse and worse and worse. Saudi plans to increase oil output next month going well above 10 million barrels a day as the kingdom responds aggressively to the collapse of its OPEC plus alliance with Russia. Saudis slashing the prices it sells crude into the foreign markets by the most in at least 20 years, offering unprecedented discounts in Europe, the Far East, and the US to entice refiners to purchase Saudi crude at the expense of other suppliers. And supposedly, Saudi may go up to as much as 12 million barrels a day. At this rate here, the price of oil certainly looks to be heading further and further down. Let's see how the US responds to this. This article here out of Bloomberg just gets into more details about the pricing itself. If you're interested right here, essentially bringing it down a few dollars a barrel, a little discount for all those buyers. I thought this chart was interesting. Breathing space, Russia's budget is better prepared for lower oil than six years ago. The bars are the actual oil price and the line is the break even oil price. Big changes, that's for sure. Just look at where the price of oil was during this period of time. This is very beneficial for many countries. Oil exporting countries do tend to benefit during this time. We also have to worry about the geopolitical tension. We also have to worry about how many buyers there are there are obviously restrictions because you have these alliances like OPEC and so on that limits how much revenue they could generate it also depends on the refiners where it's going there's so many factors here and that's why this happens to be one of the most important commodities but also some of the most complex and this starts to bring me uh, full circle because we talked about shale initially and I wanted to show you this. It's key to understand. The great American shale, oil, and gas bust. Fracking gushes, bankruptcies, defaulted debt, and worthless shares. There's so many people today that keep talking about the energy independence of the United States and that's fantastic. That is a lot of a goal, but, but it has to be realistic. When we look at all the data, it isn't adding up and that's unfortunate for a lot of the corporations and a lot of the jobs that surround this industry. Following the sharp redrop in oil and natural gas prices in late 2018, bankruptcy filings in the U.S. by already weakened exploration and production companies, oil field services companies, and midstream companies jumped by 51% in 2019. This brought the total of the great American shale, oil, and gas bust since 2015 in these three sectors to 402 bankruptcy filings. I have a chart to show you. Wolf Street just plotted out the data from this particular study, but it just gives you an idea of what's been happening over the last few years. A lot of these companies have so much debt and we're talking about it financed so cheaply, even though interest rates are extremely low, even though they're poised to get even lower, it doesn't matter because these corporations can't make ends meet. They seem a lot like the average person. You could see it broken down by state at the top. No question about it. Texas is there. In second, you have Delaware, but I mean, it's comparing 200 to 50. The action seems to be in Texas. There's no doubt about it. And then just to give you a little bit more information, you could see the countries at risk. Low oil prices will adversely affect countries throughout the world. I want to always bring you as much information as I possibly can, not just focus on the news, but try to inform you in general also. So certain parts of the world, oil is very cheap to dig up out of the ground. It's easy to refine and it's abundant. We know that typically, you know, you see certain areas, certain countries, they're major exporters. They've been doing so for decades and 
decades. And then we have other countries, like Canada, for instance, where it's a much more difficult process. Even mining of any type of, let's say, gold, for example. Brazil has some examples where you are mining through all this rock to get these little fragments of gold. And this process is just so expensive. It's so difficult. But in some cases, it's actually profitable. And that's why they go through it all. The United States has the fracking boom that's been going on, except the problem is that it's not profitable at these current prices, especially as they head lower and lower. So I like seeing maps like this. I also like to see how certain countries interact with others, where they're getting it from. If you're an importer of oil, you're seeing the prices go down. Obviously, this is going to be so good for you. You're going to be getting things cheaper and cheaper. Again, it depends where it's refining, depends on where it's coming from, and so on. But you got freight costs decreasing. There are so many benefits in this way. But if the country's revenue is declining, they encounter other problems. So it's a real balancing act, and it can throw a lot of countries one way or another. So let's keep an eye on this. I want to do this video here. It's not what I normally cover, but obviously, it's so important for obvious reasons. I'm going to end the video there. If you found it informative, hit that thumbs up button. Remember that I am also now posting unique content on Instagram and on Twitter. It's actually quite refreshing because I can actually say more than I can on this platform. That's for sure. It feels good to be able to speak my mind a little bit. If you want to learn how to sell online, I have a free e-course for you. It's available at the amazongps.com. If you want to read two of the best financial books out there, guess what? They're right here. I wrote them, The Money GPS and Global Economic Collapse. Two very easy to understand, very easy to read books. Check them out at the link in the description. If you want the audiobook instead, themoneygps.com. Have you followed what's going on in the markets? This video right here will explain everything you need to know right now. Keep you up to date. Check it out. Click the video. I'll see you there.